cool in our valley even though spring had started. We're desperately waiting for summer. Um, I decided to get up this morning and do some exercise. My, I was inspired by MK Books who has a challenge where every time she does yoga she rewards herself with some money and that's her book buying money so if she doesn't do her yoga she doesn't have any money to buy books it's a good idea and I told her that I'm gonna steal it and I am starting today to make a little book buying fund that is linked to my exercise I would love to do some more exercise I'd love to do something every day I have two little boys that require a lot of running around after so I need to keep up my fitness so I thought I'd get up this morning and do that. Let's see whether it's a good or a bad idea. <laughs> I'll talk to you soon. Okay, behind your step. Take your feet a little wider than hip distance. Ready to go, Ray? Let's take a bounce to the right side. You go, right to left, right to left. Just shift your body weight from one leg to the other. It's hard. I maybe do planks. Oh my God. Okay. Oh my God. I earned that dollar for my book budget with every one of those planks. Okay, time to get the kids to school. So I'm sitting out in the sun having a read outside. It's, it's a beautiful day. And I'm reading this book and all of a sudden I hit this sentence and hang on, let me read it to you. Um, so when time delivered me all too quickly into middle age and I began looking back over how my life had unfolded and considering the paths untaken, those lulling, undermining what ifs, I never found myself imagining, not even for worse, let alone for better, how things would have been. This book, and that just, that triggered me right back to life after life and the talk about decisions that shape your future and parallel timelines and the what ifs of life and I'm kind of freaking out and wondering why these two books have been put in front of me <laughs> why am I all of a sudden reading you know there's so many references to time I think this book's more about memory and how we shape our memories to be what we want them to be but this constant talk about time and the circula circula circulatory nature of time um, as opposed to the parallel nature and yeah, all of this stuff is being put in front of me and I'm not too sure why. Should I think about that more or should I just, I think I'll just keep reading. That's how you pull everything together. That's how you start with something interesting, work your way up to it and pull it all together. Julian Barnes, yeah, he only needed 150 pages, revealed it all in the last two pages, kept me reading, kept me intrigued. That was cool. I didn't pick it. It's kind of refreshing to finally read a book where I didn't pick the twist. Ah, oh, this is a good book. It's as much about trying to work out what's going on as it is about a reflection on um, how you shape your memories and how you, um, how nostalgia is something that is so bent by what you want to believe so your interactions with people in your past you kind of remember them in ways that put you in a good light and become nostalgic over those sorts of things when really are we really remembering exactly what happened there's also an interesting um thought towards the end about i guess it's about empathy and about how 
um, things we do in the moment have consequences for people that we may not know about. He did something a long time ago, wrote a letter that had quite an interesting, well, it was, it was a really angry letter. And some of the things that he was angry about and wished upon the person that he wrote the letter to came true. And um, he was embarrassed and upset by that, that he had actually said those words back then without even thinking that perhaps that could happen. Yeah, it's a good book. I did some marks. There's a few passages in here that I really like that I will just go back to now and have a read through. But finally, I've read a book that has um, a good twist in it. Tick. Thank God. I needed it. I really needed it. I like this line that has been, uh, that goes through the book. It's, where is it? Um, he, a long time ago in class, he claimed that history was the lies of the victors. And his friend said, as long as you remember that it is also the self-delusions of the defeated. I like that line. That interests me. Um, I also like this passage. Um, where is it? Um, which is all about maybe living the life that you're supposed to live and how it's passionless and... Um, if you just, you know, get married and have the kids and do all the things that you're supposed to do, is that enough? And when you get to the end of your life, is that enough? Or do you regret the things not done? I know that's kind of cliche and all that sort of stuff, but I thought this passage was really cool. Um, it's something I think about a lot. And I try and make sure that... Um, we don't live in the society cookie cutter and we haven't so far even though we've got the house with the kids it's still um about living outside of the boundaries that are placed in you by society i think so that's why this really stuck with me yeah okay good book i'm giving it four stars i liked it i liked it a lot so i just added the sense of an ending to the top of my stack for um september this is what i've read so far in september yeah and then this is what i'm picking up now i'm kind of scared too i didn't have the love for my brilliant friend that everybody else did i found it I don't know, is boring the right word? I read it a long time ago. Um, but it just wasn't, it didn't captivate me at all. I The only reason I've picked this up is because of um, Kendra Winchester, who um, in her Women in Translation month read a lot of Eleanor Ferrante and um, really talked... Um, a bit more about the subplots and all that, the, you know, the themes that run through her books. Um, and that in interested me. This particularly interested me. I mean, it's about, um, you know, a bit of a standard storyline, but still it's about a, um, a, a mother who passes away and then the daughter um, starts to reveal, you know, what happened in her mother's life that she didn't know about after she had passed away. Um, and starts to understand that her mother had a life, you know, her mother was a person. That idea is really interesting to me because it's important to me that I'm, for my children, that I'm my own person, not just their mum. So, um, and I would like them to realise that before I died and understand that that's how it works, especially with two boys. Um, it's important that they understand for me, I think it's important that they understand, um, you know, what a woman really is, what a strong woman really is, what an independent woman really is, and that we're not just all here to give birth to them and then attend to their every need. <laughs> um, yeah, I, that's, anyway. So that whole thing really resonates with me. 
Um, so I thought I would pick this one up next. It's the next one to go back to the library anyway. So I don't want that creaky librarian on my case. Um, <laughs> the kids are still out at tennis again. So um, I'm going to make a cup of tea and stuff this down. Thank you.